allow us to keep a level head and to make decisions that are needed for the city. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's call the roll now. Mr. Taylor, Mr. Sherman. Sure. Mr. Dumpy. Here. Mr. Grant. Here. Mr. Booth. Mr. Jones. Here. Let's try a motion to excuse uh, Mr. Taylor and Mr. Booth. Second. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Duffy? Yes. Mr. Grant? Yes. Mr. Yes. Okay. Um, has everyone had a chance to review the minutes from the October 11th and October 25th regular meetings and the October 26th special meeting? I'll motion to adopt. Yes. Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Dunphy? Yes, Before we go further, um, can I make a motion to amend the agenda to add ordinances um, under second reading um, 8721 and 8021? Absolutely. I'll second that motion. Is that the second reading? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Ms. Grant? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Dunphy? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, any citizens' comments? Okay. Um, any business and organizational comments? All right. Any committee discussions? We had a very short finance just started on the 2022 budget. Oh, and we talked about the um, previous city attorney bills. Okay. What was the discussion? And we're bringing an ordinance for tonight. Are we, is the committee's recommendation to pay all of it or be part of it or to start negotiations? Like so start okay. I think you guys have to have that. Just begin negotiations, what makes yeah. sense. Okay. Yeah. Authorizing you to do tonight, so. They don't have to amend. Oh. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. All right. That's it. Okay. Anyone think else? All right. Um, department updates. Who do we have tonight? Chief Barber? <clears throat> yep. So uh, 2055 is our second out engine. <clears throat> it is actually out of service again. It uh, failed the required pump test a couple of weeks ago. We had a, a company come down, an over apparatus repair companies come down, run through some tests. They could not get it to fail, but it, it did fail on the pad during testing previously. So I mean, we I have to take that out of town tomorrow and have that dropped off to that company so they can run a test for a couple of days so we can find the problem and fix it. That truck in question is our 1999 International E1 out of all our pumpers and engines. That's the oldest truck we have besides your ladder truck. So eventually we're gonna have to look at, uh, again, replacing these apparatus and have a replacement plan. I haven't got that established yet. When I do, I'll approach city manager with that and then we can approach council at that point. Um, the FEMA AFD grant was awarded successfully. <clears throat> the award has been received. The city does not have the money in the bank accounts yet. I have requested funds because they've changed some things a little bit with FEMA now. They want to see the money spent before they reimburse. Before we could request the money, almost within 30 days, but they're spending the money. They were, they were good. They don't like to see the money in their accounts every 30 days because they don't want the cities to generate, you know, any type of interest off that money. So I have opted to wait until uh, 2022 calendar year. Uh, that money is good for a year from FEMA. So I'll wait until January rolls around. That way we can spend the money out of capital improvement and the money goes right back in or, or wherever 
Um, the other ones I picked up my phone. <clears throat> um, most of you know that I require all firefighters, shift members to train while on shift and a lot of that training. Part of that training, uh, what took place on October 21st, myself and two additional certified instructors that are fire instructors from the, from the fire department, participate in live burn instruction for the Tri-County JBS Fire and EMS uh, students, for those that don't know. Uh, a number of us, three of us at the, at the fire department are actually instructors for that fire and EMS program at Tri-County. Live burn took place at the Wellston Volunteer Fire Department Training Academy's burn tower in Wellston. Um, that's a required training for any fire instructor that wants to do any type of live fire training. That's important, especially in this area. There aren't very many live fire instructors. So to get that and get that established for our department is something that's really needed. Uh, fire prevention education was pushed back due to census counts in the city. We were able to get in and we actually interacted with every child in the school and Nelson Door School from kindergarten through fifth grade. So that was a success again this year. Uh, this year's trick or treat, <clears throat> we, the hours were changed. Um, we knew it was going to kind of be hit and miss. It was either going to be popular or unpopular. Um, we ran around uh, town uh, giving out candy. I stayed in contact with PD. What we noticed was still at seven o'clock. Most of the people went inside, stopped giving out candy, and most of the kids were not on the streets. So that's something for us to think about for next year. Uh, donation letters for the Volunteer Fire Department 73rd Christmas Basket Program were uh, sent out on November 1st. And the basket application will be available through November 26th. And I'm proud to announce that we had the venue changed um, to here in the city. After last year, we were kind of stuck by ourselves running the program. We had a neighboring department that, because of COVID, felt that it wasn't safe to do that. We picked up the slack with city employees. It worked out great to the point where I've had those same city employees come to me and say, hey, we'd like to do that this year. It makes it easier for our department, being a paid department, to be inside the city and be here at the department. It makes sense to help out with PD. Uh, they helped out last year. Even the utility department helped out. So we moved that venue to our department. That way, the same city employees can help out again this year. Um, for those that don't know, this past Saturday, November 6th, we responded to a bomb threat at Kroger. Um, we, it, yeah, it sounds kind of funny, yeah, a bomb threat at Kroger, but we were able to clear the building with the OU bomb squad, bomb canine unit, and Nelson PD. Nothing was found, there was no threats found. Uh, the building was soon turned back over to the Kroger employees. Um, most of you have seen the hometown hero banners at are starting to pop up around the square. There's actually one over at the BFW as well. We've been helping out the American Legion Post 229, um, installing those banners for them in between emergency runs. The fire department has it's worked out great. And I am in the process right now of getting one of those banners for senior firefighter Jeff Arms. And I have passed along my information to Chief Fish as well, or Officer Scott Dolly. They have, because of the history of the city of Nelsonville, and the lack of line of duty deaths, there was only one for the police department, and that was back in the 1800s. They have reserved the center area of the square just for Jeff and uh, for Scott. So as soon as I get that information to them, the banner will get in, get in and we'll get that established, and get it put up. I'm still working on numbers for EMS transport. I know a lot of council members that came to me and asked me about this, and, and I've, seen, I've seen a lot of interest, so I'll try, I'm still working on that. And our civil service test for the fire department is still scheduled for December 2nd. Um, we're doing good, but we are still down four part-time firefighters right now. So our full-timers are actually picking up a lot of shifts. And our members that are working are just continuing to, to cover shifts. So it's important to get candidates in, but we know it's hard to retain employees that are part-time. It's hard to get a buy-in to the city. And we understand that. It's, it's part of being a part-time. But uh, we're working and still trying to do some retention right now. That's all I've got. Any questions for Chief Farley? That bomb threat, wouldn't they, did he give them a note or something like that? I don't have the details. Um, it was, uh, you know, we take all the threats, we try to treat every threat as being credible. So we cleared the building um, with Nelson PD units. 
have with OU K9 unit and there was no threat found. SO and uh, PD um, took the guy in today for oh, there's no sure. question. So it should be something in the should be some type of press release, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Chief. Mr. Cohen. I want to start off by thanking everybody that was out there Wednesday night when we had our our big leak that I'm sure you all know about because we had no water. Um, it took a lot of people. It was a real tough one to get figured out. Um, you know, the contractors that are working in town came and helped. Um, Bob Bachman came and helped. Mark Hall came out and helped. It, it, was, it was a tough one for everybody. And I, I just want to say thanks to everybody that came out. Thanks to the guys who, you know, give it all they had until almost four o'clock in the morning to make sure everybody had water on Thursday morning. <coughs> Mill Street is getting paved starting tomorrow. The intermediate will be put down on Mill Street tomorrow. Good um, for Wednesday morning to do the top and pulling. Pulling will be done Wednesday off also. So everybody up there will finally be back to the way it should be instead of a landmine. Um, we put a D rider in the lift station over here. VFW, they came in and it's electric. If it starts to back up, because where we've had some issues with it over there, it'll actually kick itself and run backwards. Try to kick out any rags or anything. So far, so good. I haven't had any issues. So hopefully that gets us out of the water with that for a while. Tomorrow morning, the leaf schedule will be going out. There'll, there'll be a press release for it. We're going to do it on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So that'll be put out tomorrow. So if people need the leaves picked up, they can call in here and get put on the list. And they come in and pick it up every morning on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and head out. And do it. St. John's, St. John Street is on the new water main now. So we, we killed the old water main today. So hopefully we can start getting cleaned up up there and get that back where it needs to be. The, the water main's been put in on Monroe Street and North Alley, as well as Watkins Street. They still got work to do. They got to tie over services, uh, put fire hydrants on. But the main itself is in the ground. It's just not fired up yet. So hopefully here within the next couple of weeks, those will be done also. They started on Kimberly Road today. So that one's going to take a little bit of time. Went out through there. There's a lot of stuff in the way. Um, the sweeper will be back out starting Thursday. We'll be back on regular schedule with the sweeper on Thursday. So it'll be running five days a week. Get that out if needed. Every other weekend, we can run it on Saturday and Sunday. So that's all I got. It's just been, we've been pretty crazy. Had some, like I said, a major leak, and just everybody's trying to get caught up with everything. So, all right. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Cohen? Is there a special number to call for the lead pickup, or just call the main number? Just call the main number is what we've done in, in the past. Becky's been fielding those calls. And Actually, there is one more thing for anybody listening at home. Mill Street, there's no parking on the street between 7 and 5. Starting tomorrow morning. 7 a.m. And there's signs up. They had some issues today. There was eight cars parked on, on the street up there on the three or fours while they were trying to prep it for asphalt. And having a hard time getting them moved. We put no parking signs up. So between 7 and 5 tomorrow. <coughs> No parking on Mill Street. Okay. Thank you. All right. Moving on to second reading. 82-21. This is the ordinance from the meeting, the first meeting in October. Yeah. And I left it the way I got it. It was said under suspension of the rules. Mm -hmm. But we read it anyway. But that was only first reading, so I didn't realize that last time. So this will be, can we just do second reading then yes. today? Okay. All right. Okay, you ready? 
we're ready. An ordinance authorizing city manager Scott Frank to accept the Ohio Department of Transportation small city grant, small city program grant award. Whereas the city applied for a grant award to the Ohio Department of Transportation for the CR 33 slash CR 178 roadway improvement project, whereas the project was selected by the small city program, whereas the city desires to accept the grant award from the Ohio Department of Transportation small city program before the deadline of Friday, November 25th, 2021. Now, therefore, be ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Athens County, Ohio, as follows. City Manager Scott Frank is authorized to accept the grant award from the Ohio Department of Transportation Small City Program. No, this is not going to be an emergency. Is this still going to be an emergency? No, no, no this is the second reading. reading. Yeah. Okay. Um, duly enacted by Council on second reading the eighth day of November 2021. Okay. Any council discussion on this matter? Motion to adopt. Second. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Dumpy? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. All right. Now we're on to ordinance 87 21. Secretary. An ordinance authorizing changes to the shutoff code and procedure to require payment of all charges owed plus fees for re reconnection and amending the abatement program to include the two tier fee structure for the abatement policy $30 for $500 in coverage, $50 for $1,000 in coverage. Whereas the city of Nelsonville is setting a shutoff code procedure and adjusting the abatement policy. And whereas this will be in the best interest, interest of the city of Nelsonville and customers to reduce water leak liabilities and decrease the number of shutoff utility accounts. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the city of Nelsonville, Athens County, Ohio, that customers who experience utility service shutoff must now pay their full balance owed plus a shutoff fee of $75 before service can be reconnected or reinstated. This includes past due balances, most recent balance, shutoff fee of $75, and all other charges owed at the time of proposed reconnection. Once this payment is made, it is understood that the balance of the customer account will now owe $0 to be eligible for reconnection. There shall be a two-tier premium for water loss abatement policies for the city, $30 for $500 in coverage, $50 for $1,000 in coverage. The abatement policy is a premium paid that covers the policyholder for up to the coverage amount of their utility bill if their utility bill is excessive due to a leak or water loss event. This ordinance shall be effective at the earliest moment provided by law. Do an act of my council on second reading this 8th day of November 2021. Okay. Any council discussion on this matter? Yeah. Uh, Taylor, when does that take effect? January one. Um, so this the, would, the abatement part of it. Yeah, it would be for next year's abatement, um, which is due January tenth. And okay. I think the technical answer would be this would be effective in December eighth or December seventh. Yeah. Well, I was just talking about the abatement part of it. Just yeah, it would only it would only that part would only apply to the new signups for next year. Okay. But you can pay that at any time, or yep. We're going to get notices out pretty much any time after this meeting. So, um, how are you getting this out? We're going to mail. Yep. And then if we're going to do start doing announcements and everything. We usually so. Okay. Motion to adopt. I'll second that. Thank you, Mr. Sherman. Yes. Ms. Grant. Yes. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry, Mr. Nelson. <laughs> Yes. It's Grant. Yes. It's Jones. Yes. And then we have Ordinance 88-21 on second reading. An ordinance increasing the sewer rate effective January 1st, 2022 and trash rate effective April 1st, 2022. Whereas new sewer rates must be increased effective January 1st, 2022 
and transfer its effective April 1, 2022 to meet the funding requirements for the new sewer plant and to pass along contractual increases in trash service charges. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Ohio, that effective January 2, 2000, January 1, 2022, the sewer rates are increased as follows. The in town 1500 gallon minimum rate for 2021 was $16.74. In 2022, it will be $18.41. For every 1000 gallons over the 1500 gallon, the 2021 rate was $10.11. It will be $11.12 in 2022. Out of town, the 1500 Gallon minimum for 2021 was 2510. In 2022, it will be 2761. For every gallon, every thousand gallons over the 1500 is $15.17 in 2021, $16.69 in 2022. Hawking County Commissioners per 1000 gallons rate was $4.32 in 2021 and will be $4.75 in 2022. Trash rates are increased as follows. From $12.50 effective April 1st, 2021 to $12.66 effective April 1st, 2021 per customer per month for curbside refuse and rubbish collection for one residence or unit and up to seven bags. Recycle bin and service include per month, per customer per month for re curbside recycling, $2 per container per month for optional rental, mobile coder, or equivalent, $5 per sticker per special rubbish item, or extra big pickup is optional. This ordinance shall be effective at the earliest date provided by law, duly enacted by council on second reading, the eighth day of November 2021. Okay. Any council discussion on this? I have a question. Um, the Hawking County Commissioner rate, um, is that like some kind of set plan we have for them on how much we can raise it for a thing? Because it doesn't seem proportionate to the other raises. It should be the same uh, percentage. percentage? Okay. And, uh, so. <clears throat> and just to explain to everybody at home what that is, that's for Murray City. Murray City, since it's Hawking County, they mm -hmm. build a flat rate for all their sewer and they maintain the lines over there. and you know, all the maintenance and they just pay us for the actual product that they send us. It comes to us, right? Correct. Um, if I think back to when the agreement started, um, the contract said that we had to start at four, if I remember right. And that was their initial rate, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. So any changes you guys have made since was just percentage changes on top of that. I think that makes sense. Okay. And the reason these are being changed also is to keep up with the, the cost of the sewer plant and the increases that need to be need to be to keep up with that project, correct? Yeah, and the trash increase is just what the contract's going up us. So okay. um, there's no increase for the city. All right. Motion to adopt. Discussion. Mr. Duffy? Yes. No. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. I don't think that happens. No, it doesn't. You just need to begin until you get full. All right, well, we have a bunch of stuff that is under suspension of rules, and we don't have enough to do that, so we'll just make the first reading. Okay. First reading? First reading one. One second. Okay. Somebody like it. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry, my mind. No. No. An ordinance authorizing city manager Scott Frank to enter into, accept, and or authorize the contract change order for the 20 
County water system improvement and declaring it an emergency. Whereas the city of Nelsonville has entered into a contract with 2020 water system improvements. Whereas several items of the contract need adjusted in order to complete the contract. And whereas the change order detailing the needs, changes, and reasons for the changes is attached as exhibit one. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Adams County, Ohio, as follows. City Manager Scott Frank shall have the authority to enter into, accept, and or authorize the contract change order for the 2020 water system improvements as shown in Exhibit 1. Um, Second reading, okay. This one shall be effective at the earliest moment from the Bible. Okay, I'm duly enacted by council on second reading, the 22nd day of November 2021. All right, ordinance 91-21. Need someone to reduce? So introduce. Thank you. An ordinance authorizing the amendment to the Ohio Small Group, the OSGP, Consortium Agreement and Bylaws. Whereas an amendment to the Ohio Small Group Pool Consortium Agreement and Bylaws was made. Now therefore be ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Athens County, Ohio as follows. City Auditor Taylor Sackinson has the authority to sign the amendment of the Ohio Small, Small Group Pool Consortium Agreement and Bylaws be made. This ordinance shall be effective at the early state permitted by law and only enacted by council on second reading the 22nd day of November, 2021. Thank you, ma'am. Just for council's awareness and the public, the amendment is the board of the Ohio Small Group School uh, is um, trying to make it slightly easier for a member to withdraw. Uh, so like now, so if we wanted to go with a different provider. Um, it's still pretty tough to pull out consortiums. It takes like a year's worth of planning, but I think they shorten the window by a couple months. Um, so it's a small change in the grand scheme of things. It doesn't impact premiums or anything. And it's friendly to us. Thank you, sir. All right. Ordinance 92 21. Need someone to introduce it, please. I'll introduce it. Thank you. An ordinance authorizing city manager Scott Frank and city auditor Taylor Sappington to enter into negotiations on outstanding bills. Whereas the city of Nelsonville has outstanding bills that need negotiated. Now, therefore, be ordained by the Council of the City of Nelsonville, Athens County, Ohio, as follows. City manager Scott Frank and city auditor Taylor Sappington shall have the authority to enter into negotiations on outstanding bills. This ordinance shall become effective at the earliest date provided by law, duly enacted by council on second reading on the 22nd day of November 2021. All right. And that's all this. Uh, we are for the city manager's report. All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, I do have a question. Maybe I missed it. Ordinance 90 21, the change order. Uh, I know we don't have the folks here to pass on emergency, but I do need that. To proceed forward with the water, it's to uh, make the changes to quantities for the Mill Street project that they're getting ready to pave tomorrow, and then also to button up the St. John Street uh, project. So the emergency is based off the asphalt plan for the St. John project. Okay. Um, so you saying you need a special meeting? I mean, like we can't yeah. pass it tonight. Is on. A right. So if we could do it later, unfortunately this week, if everybody can make it. All right. So we will. Uh, Talk to. I know you're out Tuesday and Thursday. I'm not Tuesday and Thursday. Are you good every night this week? Just be short, right? Right. Yeah. Be real short. Yeah. Yep. Before Survivor. Um, you're good. I know. You're good every night this week. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I'll speak to Justin and to uh, Corey, and we'll get this coordinated. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for that. So I'll run down. Thank you, man. The meter replacement plan is going ahead of schedule right now. So they were originally estimating two meters per day. Right now they're averaging 10 meters a day of swapping them out. It's going really well. This company is doing a fantastic job of cleaning up after themselves with a couple of hiccups in Uh One of them we had tonight, but we called the contractor back out to clean it up. So it should be resolved. If not now, it's very shortly. It's done. Perfect. 
the we found out um, since our last meeting that we got two point seven million dollars in grant for phase three, hundred percent grant. So we're not paying anything back on that. That's uh, that is sewer on. That's sewer uh, sewer repairs on Monroe and Meyer. Sewer added to railroad. Sewer added onto um, um, Trash Power Road at the backside there, going through those communities uh, behind the Runyons and so forth. So, and there's a and then upgrading a lot of the lift stations in town. So it's huge. It's uh, very much needed, and I was really excited that we got it all on grant. So no loan. Did that include anything for sewer? Yeah. Well, it'll include, you're talking about the old pool? Yeah. Yeah, so we will now have sewer down there that we can add the sewer to. Yes. Good. So, who's going to be sitting there? Uh, they're, I'm not sure how they're going to do it. If they're going to, they're going to bore under, I believe. So. They, they've already bored the water. Right. So, oh, okay. Cool. Um, so, that's good news. The, we found out, and I sent an email to council, but we did not, currently, we have not received any of the monies for the water line project going underneath the Hawking River. There is still more monies coming down the House Bill 148 chain, so it is possible that it still could get funded through that. And then we also found out today that there, uh, the feds pushed more infrastructure spending, which could potentially put that in line for something else. So having given up hope on it, I was a little bummed we didn't get it on the first go around, but hopefully we get it uh, soon. Met with the county the other day for them to rack and stack their uh, basically paving projects. That's the one we put forth that would have been 400 grant, 400 loan. Uh, the county was very generous and gave us their second highest amounts of points, but I really doubt that it'll make it. So we won't get the final answer until uh, uh, the end of this month. And that's when it goes to the state and the state competes. But uh, based off traditional um, allotments of points and funding and everything else, we're probably not in there, but could be. And that's for next year. So if we don't get it this year, we'll try again next year. And we'll learn some things on that. The I want to echo what Jason said. You know, the team was out there till four in the morning the other night, and uh, that was 13 hours of overtime, I believe, for each one of them. And there was out there, and it, it just kicked their butt. Um, literally, the guys were walking around with witching sticks and metal detectors to look for water valves that the caps were buried 10 inches under the soil. So uh, it, it was very much a labor intensive ordeal. And then, uh, and then also to echo what Jason said, as far as the lift station here at the BFW, we have not had an overflow since adding the last bit of electric parts, which is really good. And then just a reminder to everybody, we got $250,000 of grant money on emergency to replace that. It should be going out for advertising tomorrow. And as soon as, uh, as, soon as we get the bids in and um, timeline for the supply chain to bring the materials in, then I can give you an estimated time when it'll be complete. We met with uh, the regional jail and EPA last week. Um, rather productive meeting as far as the debris coming down from the jail and potentially the other two correctional facilities are all on the same line that go through this uh, VFW lift station. And they are um, actively looking at solutions to catch the bigger debris from it coming downstream. And as I shared with them on our end, we're also beefing up our infrastructure to handle it. Um, ideally, we're going to put what's called a muffin grinder, which is just a big, huge grinder that catches everything first, grinds it up, and then pushes it down. Also, part of our design is doubling the horsepower of our pumps. Currently, we have seven horsepower pumps, and we're going to put 15 horsepower pumps in the new uh, lift station, along with new piping and everything, new valves and so forth. So, hopefully, we can uh, put that uh, to bed and that problem solved. We are having a problem with, um, as they call it, the Oakley lift station over in Bookdale. So we we're looking at potential solutions for that, very similar to the one we have here is with the, the ragger, the electric device. It'll be slightly more complicated because it's not three-phase power over there, but they do have a solution and they're working up an idea. The company is working up a, a schematic now to get us a price on what that looks like to hopefully solve that problem. And then between that and the grant we just got for 2.7, hopefully our lift stations are pretty decent condition at that point going forward. And that, that's all I have for you folks tonight. Could they possibly put a master rate on there too? 
a master aerator? No, a ma ma uh, muffin grinder. Muffin grinder, mass. You know. Are you talking about at the jail? Yeah, well, over there in Buffalo as well. I mean, is that something that's feasible? Or? Um, not with the way that it's set up. Uh, so it's my understanding muffin grinders have to feed through uh, gravity, and then it can be pumped after that. So our lift stations, the only way we're able to do it up here is we're going to put the muffin grinder up the road so it catches it before it goes through the parking lot of the VFW over down the street. And uh, over there, we don't have the spacing yet unless we do a complete or redo the structure. Ideally, the macerator. Ideally, if this um, deragging device works as advertised, mm -hmm. it'll solve our problem for significantly less money. Their basic, uh, the one they put in over here, the basic price is $2,500, which is nothing compared to a motor. Motor's 10 grand. Right. And um, so if we can get that put over there with the variable, it's, it's adjusting the currency to make it act like it's three phase instead of being three phase. And um, it likely could solve the problem. What's that? Bump booster. Sure. I don't know. Who's the power up to? So Thanks. ideally, for five grand, we can hopefully fix that one over there as well, getting our roof stations ideally in good shape, which would be really nice going into the new sewer plant. That's great. <coughs> Thank you very much. That was shit. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Frank? Thank you, Scott. All right, we're to the good of the order. Um, just Grant, start with you. Um, I would just like to say thank you too to the water guys and everyone that helped because it was nice to have water in the morning when we got up and we've had so many water leaks in the past 18 months, two years, just nonstop. Um, it was unfortunate that we, we had to do what we had to do, but it was lucky enough that when we had to shut it down, it was late after everybody had already pretty much laid down for the night and we had it back on in the morning fully down back. We appreciate that. Yep. And we should. <laughs> I heard the toilets get going. Miss <laughs> so. Jones. Um, sure. I actually, I, one personal thing, uh, I just want to say happy birthday to my daughter and to my mother um, and my sister, Dee Dee. Blue of birthday, come up here. Um, and then I also want to um, mention something that I saw last week that Nelsonville York High School has um, created a new um, high school newspaper. Um, electronic newspaper. So I don't know if, if anybody has seen that yet, but I happened to um, get a copy for order to me last week, and I just want to congratulate the school and the um, teachers over there who are getting that together. It's a great um, opportunity for the students to participate in some news making and creating kudos for their classmates. And it was very well done. I was very impressed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sherman. So I want to echo what Carla said, and remember winter's coming upon us, and them guys go out on water breaks. I mean, they got to stick their hands down that freezing water. So just uh, if you see them out there, thank them because that is rough. Okay. Um, only thing I'd like to say is um, it come to my attention that there's some people in the in the community that says that council has lost the voices and ears of the community. Now, listen, we all, this is a hard enough job uh, when you vote on stuff that costs you money. Uh, I don't know one council person that's on this council that wouldn't listen to you if you came up and talked to them. Our emails are posted. Um, and I kind of take offense to that a little bit because we are out here for display and take all kinds of criticism, but yet we two people ran unopposed. So, and also I'd like to say congratulations to those who got elected, Mr. Clement, Ms. Jones, uh, Mr. Booth, Mr. Sherman, uh, and Mr. Taylor. It was uh, really great. So congratulations to all of you. You're not to, no longer appointed, you are elected. So, which is great. Um, also, I'd like to say thank you to I got to watch the Nelsonville York or Fry football game. Um, our boys uh, fought very hard and did not give up. Um, they were playing a team that was much higher ranked, and uh, it was a good, it was a, it was a great game 
for quite a, quite a long, quite a, you know, till, for a while. And uh, I was proud of him for not giving up. So uh, to the, to the uh, Millsville York football team, hold your head high. So um, that's all I have. So we're going to adjourn. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to make sure with um, Justin and with Corey, to make sure one can show. Corey probably won't be available all week. Yeah, he's working shifts, shift. so to Wednesday, I think. Yeah. I think Wednesday's like his weekend. Okay. I remember right. Um, I'll make sure we're just done. So, yeah. okay. And then I will contact you immediately. Like, One hour by if possible. Completely forgot what the lease. Oh, yeah. Where was Go ahead. So, yeah, uh, absolutely. The, the, they presented us with a potential contract uh, for us to look at and go. So, I would like to call the police and fire committee. However, I would like to wait till Mr. Taggart. Mr. Taggart uh, is currently ill, so I'd like to wait till mayor is available to uh, come to the meeting if you are all okay with that. And then uh, council can go through all the details and uh, see what you think and go from there. So, yeah, I, I believe he's not, not very well right now. So, okay, I'm fine with that. All right, motion to adjourn. Okay. Pick a voice. It was a tie. Pick it was a tie. <laughs> I'll just put you both in there. Is that okay? Right. Ms. Jones? Yes. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Mr. Duffy? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes.